Morning, welcome to Mokoekawa Church. We are glad to see you right here in Kalua Corner with us. For those who are joining us online, welcome to Mokoekawa this morning. Uh, let us pray and commit our service to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your presence, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together to worship you. We ask you that your Holy Spirit will lead and guide us this morning. Lord, we want to hear from you. Lord, we want to be with you. So we commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you join me? Let's stand together. open our service singing together the Hawaiian doxology. Nothing 
morning into dancing. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves, you turn graves into gardens. You turn Solid ground, hallelujah, hallelujah. Cause he picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on the solid ground, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, he picked me up and he turned me around and he placed my feet on the solid ground, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He picked me up and he turned me around And he placed my feet on the solid ground Hallelujah Oh, hallelujah Yes, he's been so good, so, so good to me So good, so, so good to me So good, so, so good to me Jesus He's been so good, so, so good to me So good, so, so good to me so good, so, so good to me. He's a, let's have a little fun. Here we go. Joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Oh, yeah, let me hear you singing. Oh, that was okay. Love, joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Whoa, oh, 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 yeah. Come on. Oh, much better. God, love, joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Whoa, oh, 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 oh yeah. and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 he's been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me, Jesus. He's been so good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me. So good, so, so good to me, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. We've come to join the song. We've come to join the song. Sung long before our lives to raise our voice along heaven and earth alike. We've seen your faithful hand. We've seen your faithful hand, your mercy without end, the King who bled and died, and God who sacrificed, the enthroned, be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand generations. You are worthy, Lord of all. And unto you, the slain and risen King, we lift our voice with heaven, singing worthy, Lord of all. life we lead and on through eternity our endless praise we cry Jesus be glorified and all through this life and all through this life we lead on through eternity, our endless praise we cry. Jesus, be glorified. Oh, Jesus, be glorified. Be enthroned, be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand generations. You are worthy, Lord of all. And unto you, the slain and risen King, we lift our voice with heaven, singing worthy, Lord of all. Sing highest praises. Highest praises, Lord of all. Highest praises, highest praises, Lord of all. Highest praises, Praises, Lord of all. We give you the highest praise. 
Please, with every aspect, every moment of our lives, Lord, not just here this morning, Lord, but every part of our days, Lord, we want to honor and glorify you, Lord. You're worthy of all that we are, all that we have, Lord, we bring to you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll take a moment and greet someone close to you this morning before you have a seat. Give them an aloha. Welcome to Mokuaikawa. So glad that you've joined us this morning. And our children, ages one through grade five, are welcome to go upstairs with Annika Endicek and her Ohana, and they'll be upstairs for MCC Kids. They'll have a great time together. So all of our children, ages one through grade five, can go on upstairs and they'll have a wonderful service. Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. Welcome to MCC, Mokuaikawa Christian Church. We're so glad to be a, a part of this life together. Amen? Well, this morning we have a Stories New and Old from the Alpha series. There, This is a film series and, a, and gatherings that are going to be happening this fall. And you can hear this morning a very dramatic story of a couple that met a young woman who had been through too much and struggled through it and yet found her way to Christ. So I hope you enjoy. My mom left when I was a baby, and my dad raised me until I was four. My dad thought it was best for me to go to Germany to grow up with his sister. I remember the other day when we went to the airport and I remember holding on to that gate because I didn't want to leave him. I um, hated my father for leaving me, I, sending me somewhere I don't know. <laughs> when I was seven, I got abused from a neighbor. I hated God. I hated him for all the stuff I went through. And I was like, oh, if you exist, why would you, like, do this to me, you know? I um, was looking for a uh, nanny job, and I saw Stephanie's post. You know, I just put an ad out there for a nanny. And so the day that she walked in, we kind of just thought, you know what, this, this makes a ton of sense. Let's just do this. Matt was on the phone and he was like, yeah, Daho, we would love to have you as Riley's nanny and we would welcome you to our family. And I was like, what? This is crazy. We have so many people coming through this house 
and she would ask, like, who are all these people? You know, they babysit your kids and they come over here and play with your kids and like, why would they do that? So they love our kids, you know, we're really involved with each other and we love each other. We're, we're all part of the same community. She's like, well, I'd, I'd love to check that out. So Matt and Steph invited me to church. It was weird because I'm like, never went to church ever. They were just so nice and so welcoming, right? And I was like, oh, this is like a different experience. Like, I like going there. I think we were advertising for Alpha. Alpha was just coming back. And I said, you know, this is, would be a great way for you to learn more about what who Jesus is. And I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna go meet new people. <laughs> and yeah, that was the reason why I went to Alpha first night. I didn't really interact with much with other people. I just like listened and was quiet, I think, the first night. The second night, the third night, I felt like, oh, this is like really powerful, right? Like I started like engaging more and like asking questions. I think it was the time when it was about forgiveness. It was just so powerful that, you know, he forgave us for everything we did and that he still loves us, right? How can he, like, love me when I did, like, so many stuff, you know? How can I forgive myself? How can I forgive people who hurt me? I think that was the moment when the dog I had inside went away and the light came through. Yeah. When you came home uh, and told us that, you know, you wanted to be baptized, obviously we we're really excited for her. And then when she asked me to baptize her, I was floored. It was really exciting. Well, it was actually so easy. That's the other thing I can't get over is that I really did so little to like, introduce you. I mean, so much of it is you just hearing what was true and then just running with it and diving in. Not everyone does that. But then I just feel like I'm getting so much credit for doing no, so little. I mean, just it's saying, it's, go not, it's not little. It's like a big, you know, it's huge for you guys to like bring me into your home, you know, trusting me, being in your house and taking care of your daughter. You know, like showing me this, like, oh man, this is this great love God has for you. You know, you should come and experience it too. You know, it's like, yeah. it, it, you know, without you, I don't think I would have it now. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, Amen. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat> So we are running an Alpha course here at our church beginning September 13. So if you're around and you would like to join us, uh, we have a, a sign-up list right at the back table. Uh, please add your name and how I can get a hold of you. Uh, phone number, uh, email would be great. And, uh, and you can join us. Uh, of course, one of the great things about Alpha is that is a place for you to invite family and friends, especially those who are not coming to church at the moment. They may have questions. They may be okay with the coming in for a meal and getting to know new people. So bring them in. Everyone is welcome. At this time, I would like to invite you to join me in prayer as we pray for our families, as we pray for friends. And uh, as we come before the Lord with thanksgiving in our hearts, but there are many needs out there. And, uh, and, and I know that the Lord has put specific prayers in your heart for you to believe and pray before him. And so I'm going to ask you that you bring those prayers to the table this morning. As we go before the Lord, He knows exactly who you're praying for. And we're going to ask Him to release miracles this morning. Amen? Let's do it together. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful 
for your mercy and grace over each one of our lives. And Lord, as we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord, we want to also to remember all those who are around us, who are in need, who are suffering, Lord. And so in our families and among our friends, Lord, we, we are praying right now, Lord, asking that you touch everyone that are in need of a healing touch. If they are in the hospital right now, if they are at the home, Lord, you know where they are, Lord, then you know how difficult or how uh, not so difficult their situation is. And Lord, that you can bring an answer. So we, we want to just ask you, Lord God, that you touch them this very hour, Lord, that you release healing into their bodies. Lord, we pray for miracles to flow from the your throne of grace this morning in jesus mighty name lord god we also want to pray for our family and friends lord those who don't know you as lord and savior you know that we have been praying for them and we have believed you lord to bring revelation to them so we, together we want to present all those lord who you are giving us to pray and we are asking Lord, would you do a miracle in their lives, Lord? I pray for revelation. I pray for understanding, Lord. I pray that you answer the question maybe that is holding them back. Lord, we give them to you and we pray for their salvation this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Father, we also want to thank you for our church. We thank you for all the churches here in the islands, Lord. Thank you for the your mighty hand over us lord and everyone who is gathering this morning to worship you lord we pray fill them with your spirit lord would you bring revelation to them we pray that you bless their ministries and and multiply them lord we thank you for the church of christ here here uh in hawaii lord and of course all over our country in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. And as you taught us how to pray, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We want to take up our tithes and offerings this morning. Our ushers will come and bring uh, offering baskets, or there's prompts on the screen on how you can give online. And so this morning, let's ask the Lord to speak to our hearts. And let's respond with generosity, with faith, with obedience to the amount that he puts on our hearts that he's calling us to contribute this morning. Lord, we want to say thank you for your amazing generosity, your faithfulness over our lives, Lord, over our community, over our church, Lord, over our families, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord, you have been faithful over and over and over again, Lord. And so, Lord, we want to respond and give back out of the abundance that you've given to us, Lord. And we pray that you would use these gifts to extend your work here in Kona and around the world, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be part of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you join me? Let's stand. And as you're giving your financial gifts, let's worship the Lord in song. And all my words fall short I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do Every song must stay, and you never.
ever do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah A hallelujah And I know it's not much But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got no one response. I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. How we worship you so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah a hallelujah and I know it's not much but I'm nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing thank you for the opportunity to give and to give generously lord we are so grateful lord we serve you such a generous god lord and so lord we thank you for this chance lord we pray that you would use these gifts lord we're so grateful lord we love you so much in jesus name amen amen well please be seated Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Jeff. Just uh, a couple corrections in your bulletin. I'm not the guest speaker. <laughs> I'm the pastor here for Mokuaikawa. Our guest speaker came last week. He had to change plans. That was the, the plan a few weeks ago, was that he would be coming this week. But... Uh, uh, he came uh, to meet with the Lord in Cunningham, and so he had to come earlier. So uh, he gave a fantastic message last week, and we appreciate that very much. Um, on uh, One thing that I would like to share before we move into our uh, teaching here is that... Um, our services are going to go to a little transition. I don't know if you received the email from us from the church, but uh, basically we, beginning this next Sunday, instead of a 9 o'clock, we're going to be meeting here at 10 a.m. So it's going to be a shift for summer and probably will go to the end of the year. But uh, we uh, will have one service at 10 a.m. So you need to put that in your schedule so you don't show up too early or too late. <laughs> so we're discontinuing the 11 o'clock. So we have a 9 and 11. We're going to go to one service with 10 a.m. During this season in which we're going to begin with the Alpha, we would like to have both groups coming together so you can meet each other and, of course, have a great time of a fellowship. We will have some uh, goods after the service beginning next week. We have an aloha hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, honey. Anyway, uh, we are in a series from the book of Philippians. Uh, Paul wrote this epistle uh, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi. Paul was brought, of course, to appear before Caesar. He had been two years in prison in Caesarea, 
he was uh, not really going anywhere. They, I think uh, they were just waiting for a bribe, so they were holding him back. So he appeals to Caesar, and of course they send him to Rome. Now in Rome, uh, he was there for two years. It, it wasn't real bad. He could rent his own quarters, but he had to be chained to a guard 24 hours a day. So every six hours, a new guard would come and chain himself to Paul. And that's how he was there for two years in Rome. Of course, Paul count that as a tremendous blessing. That was his opportunity to <laughs> evangelize Caesar's uh, elite Roman soldiers. So many of them came to Christ and that was a fantastic experience for him. Of course, the whole theme of Philippians is joy. This is uh, a book that he writes about joy all the way through, but he was in prison and the situation wasn't all that great, but it's a great lesson, to, lesson for us. Of course, this was the first imprisonment in Rome. Uh, scholars uh, say that uh, he was there for two years, he was released, and, uh, but he was arrested again. And now during his second turn in Rome, he was sent to uh, a place uh, called, let's see, it was uh, Memertine. And that was a dungeon. And of course, there it was where he was eventually uh, beheaded. And that was 68 AD. From Rome, he rode to the church in Philippi. And of course, th those are friends, people that he loved. And uh, they were faithful, beloved friends. They had just sent him an offering. They took an offering and sent to him. So he was responding uh, to, to that offering in this letter. So we are in the book of Philippians and we are entering chapter 3. And so rejoice in the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And thank you, Lord God, for speaking to us. This morning, we ask you, Lord, for revelation. We ask you, Lord, for understanding. We pray that you open our eyes to see, our ears to hear. Give us a heart to receive what you have for us this morning. Lord, we, entrust in, we, we trust in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So let me begin with uh, uh, Philippians 3.1. It says, further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same thing to you again. And it is a safeguard for you. What he's saying here is this uh, rejoice in the Lord. The, the tense of the, the word here was go on constantly rejoicing. This, of course, was written by someone who, was, who had no reason to be joyful. He was, as I said, in prison. He was chained to a soldier. He didn't know if he was going to live or die. He had no idea before the end of those two years if he was going to be let go or if he was going to die. But he's telling all of us to rejoice in the Lord. So, uh, in, this, in his letter to the church of Corinth, he wrote this about his life. So, we, we can have just a, a little peek into the life of Paul. So, beginning on 2 Corinthians 11.23, he shares this. And he, he shared as a defense but uh, give us a clear idea of what he went through. And he said this, Are they servants of Christ? 
I am out of my mind to talk like this, but I am more. I have worked much harder, being in prison more frequently, being flogged more severely, and being exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was uh, pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger, in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. How are you doing? <laughs> Paul was confident that all he needed was Jesus. His life wasn't easy, but he had Jesus, and that was reason enough for him to be joyful and rejoice. If you would count how many times the Apostle Paul writes about joy or rejoice in this letter, you would probably find 14 times. When we move on to chapter 4, we have a Philippians 4, 4, he says again, rejoice in the Lord, always. I will say it again, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord has nothing to do with the circumstances around us. I believe it was just a week ago, uh, maybe a few more days, but uh, I, I remember the, the lottery on the mainland was about 1.5 billion or something like that, and somebody scored that. So I can just see the face of that person receiving the news that they are now a billionaire or they receive over uh, a billion in, in, uh, in a lottery. By the way, if you're listening to this message, we need another 900 grand to <laughs> enter into our church. Please contact us. We need you. <laughs> but this was just a temporary circumstance. Just imagine us Christians. Every Christian is filled with an overwhelming joy from the Lord. As soon as we know that we're saved, we're saved, we've been forgiven, we have eternal life with, with God, <laughs> with God. We should carry uh, a smile from ear to ear every day of our lives. It is a wonderful news. We, you are, we are the most blessed people in the universe. The joy of the Lord is the gladness of a heart that comes to us knowing God as our Heavenly Father, abiding in Christ and being filled with the Holy Spirit. A follower of Christ is always filled with joy. Our joy is very real, but it's constantly under attack. The enemy knows that a Christian without the joy of the Lord is as vulnerable as a non-Christian. You're just a target, a sitting duck. 
if you don't have the joy of the Lord going in your life. God is the sustainer of our joy and we know that in his presence there is joy. Psalms 16:11 says you make known to me the path of life in your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We know that without joy we are back to loneliness, depression, hopelessness, despair. Yes, there are some Christians that allow their joy to be robbed away and they live like that. But that lifestyle does not motivate them or anyone else around them to follow Christ. There are plenty of people around the world living in misery. Jeff just the other day uh, uploaded on Facebook the testimony of a woman named Jordan Taylor. So if you have time, just uh, go to your face to Mokoikawa Facebook and you see her testimony, a fantastic testimony from witchcraft, new age, she was a yoga uh, teacher, to faith in Christ, from a life of a loneliness and deep depression to joy in the Lord. Our Heavenly Father is the only one able to save and deliver us from the consequences of our sin and bring joy into our lives. So we need to guard our joy. No matter what is going on around us, you make a choice to rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 4.11 says, I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. We need to be content in our circumstance and rejoice in the Lord, not on things, in the Lord. Joy has much less to do with what is around you than what is in, inside of you. Of course, uh, if we go back to the book of uh, 1 Samuel, we see David being uh, in great distress. He was discouraged. They had to come back and basically their city was burned. Their wives and kids were taken away. The man now is talking about stoning David. And so he was in distress. Uh, verse 36 of First Sam Samuel 36 yeah and David was greatly distressed for the people who spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord God in the Lord his God so it's a choice you can make the cho choice to rejoice in the Lord. Psalms 42, 11 says, he, David again confronting his soul in another time. He says, why are you in despair, O my soul? Why have you become restless and disquiet within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance, and my God. Your joy is a byproduct of your relationship with the Lord. We are not joyful. If we are not joyful, it's because we are looking for joy somewhere else or in the wrong things. Rejoicing, rejoice in the Lord, not in the perfect circumstance or things around you. Then uh, Paul moves on and, uh, and he begins to talk about uh, 
protecting us ourselves against false teachers. And so let's go to verse 2, Philippians 3, 2. Watch out for dogs, for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilate, uh, mut mutilators of the flesh. Their joy was being threatened, so Paul was calling their attention. He was making a point here, uh, calling them uh, dogs, those evildoers those mutilators of the flesh. Paul, of course, was referring to a group called Judaizers, a faction of the Jewish Christians who began to teach the new Gentiles believers that uh, for them to become Christians, they needed to follow the Old Testament Levitical law. They needed to become Jews first and be circumcised before they became Christians. In Acts 15.1, we read, certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, unless you are circumcised, According to the customs taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. And so Paul was talking about these people. And of course, they were bringing confusion. And they were uh, discouraging many of the new believers. And that was not true either. So they were lying to them. We may say, thank God that there is no one doing this today. But I have to say to you, unfortunately, there are people in our churches doing just that. There are some who carry a little list on their back pocket. And on that list is what a real Christian looks like in their heads, of course. And of course, they will go through the list. And if you don't make it, they are sometimes unkind to you, or they are critical, or they will be calling your attention to something. And of course, all of us have the tendency to be one of those. <laughs> we all have our little lists. And so we need to really guard our own hearts and say, Lord, <laughs> am I contributing to this? Am I really judging my brothers and sisters instead of encouraging them in the Lord and helping them? You probably recognize a people or two as I'm sharing with you, every church has at least a couple of them. But if you get to the point that you're judging them, <laughs> you just became part of the, the, the group. So pray that they will change. Pray that uh, they will see. Because some of them are just blind. You know, they do that out of a blindness. It's not because they're trying to be mean. They're actually very sincere. They're just wrong, but they're doing that, uh, and, and they, need to, they need the help of the Lord to change. Of course, their actions and words are always putting someone down, uh, especially someone who does not cooperate with their views or actions. And if they are into politics, it becomes even more, uh, become uglier. And so pray, pray for, for those. One thing that we can tell is that the grace is not sufficient for them. You have to do more and to be, to be considered a Christian or a committed uh, 
committed Christian or a committed church member. Of course, there are others who believe in the Jewish roots movement, and, and that has gone around uh, our churches uh, where they follow the Jewish calendar and they, of course, you have to do these practices and this other thing because it's Jewish and make us look better or so on. As long as you understand that none of it is relevant to your salvation. I mean, you want to have a Shabbat together, have fun. You want to have a Passover together, that's great. But don't use that to put anybody else down and say, well, they don't do it, so you know, I'm better or they are less. And so we need to know that all that matters is, is Jesus. And so Paul was warning us that they are just like wild dogs roaming on the streets. They came to destroy. Of course, Paul also warns us about the evil workers. Good works needs to be a byproduct of our relationship with Jesus. Not, not something that we do to be accepted or to be recognized by others or to be even embraced by God. If the good work we do is not in obedience to our Lord Jesus, it becomes evil work. And we have to pay attention to that because it will lead us, it, it will rob our joy. Then he talks about false circumcision. Circum circumcision was a part of God's renewed covenant with Abraham when he was 99 years old. And after him, every young uh, male child on the eighth day of life, they were dedicated to the Lord and they were circumcised in the flesh, but also representing a circumcision of the heart. With time, it became clear that it was only a ritual and their hearts were far away from the Lord. We can compare today just like uh, Christians that we, or people that we ask, are you saved? And they say, oh yes, I, I was baptized when I was a child. Well, that was not what I asked. I asked, are you saved? To be, to get wet once, <laughs> it doesn't make you a Christian or is not your assurance of salvation. And so for some, have become another ritual that says, well, yeah, I was baptized. My mother was a Christian. My, I grew up in a Christian family, so I am a Christian. Well, that's not enough. We need a transformation in our hearts. The Judaizers would make the same mistake. They were equalizing the ritual to the circumcision of the heart. So Paul says, be aware of the mutilators of the flesh. The term is used here, it was the same that was used to the pagan priests that were with Elijah at the Mount Carmel when they were begging their God to come in and burn the, burn the, 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 the offering that they were giving and it says that they were screaming and cutting themselves and doing all kinds of things. That was the same term, those people. 
were just multi-layers of the flesh. Then Paul goes on, verse 3, Philippians 3, 3, For it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by, the, by His Spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and who put, on, who put no confidence in the flesh. There are two religions in, in the world. Well, if you c categorize them this way, right now, they say that it's about 4,000 to 4,300 religions around the world. But if you categorize them like this, human achievement, and the other one, divine accomplishment. Under the human achievement is probably the whole, the everyone else <laughs> is human achievement divine accomplishment there is only one and that is Christianity so you can say there are two religions in this world our ident identity is we are the true circumcision we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus our sins have been forgiven they were paid for by Jesus sacrifice at the cross we are the true followers the true celebrators we boast in Christ Jesus we can always spot a, a legalist they work so hard to be Christians but in their work they minimize the work of Jesus and they maximize the works of man And that's why they have no joy. They are always working hard to get to heaven. The sad thing is that they, they really believe that they keep their own rules and they can walk with an attitude like I have uh, accomplished something. And they are proud of it. Mark Twain wrote this. Having spent a considerable time with good people, I can only understand why Jesus likes to be with the tax collectors and sinners. Give me them any day <laughs> over religious people. Our message is Jesus paid, paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. In the second part of John 10:10, 10, 10, he says, "I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows." So rejoice in the Lord. Guard your heart. Be aware of uh, false teaching. And know who you are in Christ. If you never ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, let me give you an opportunity to do so. The Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's John 3.16. To receive Jesus, we need to accept him as God's Son. We need to repent from our sins and a life of selfishness. And we need to ask him to be our Lord and Savior. Not that we deserve it, but it is a gift from God. If this is your desire this morning, would you repeat the simple prayer after me? Know that your Heavenly Father is listening. He knows your heart. He will ask him. He will answer you. He will respond to you. Let's do it together. 
Heavenly Father, I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. I'm willing to turn away from my sins. I receive Christ as my Savior. I confess Him as Lord. And from this moment on, I want to follow and serve Him in the fellowship of His church. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you join me, let's stand together. Lord, I come and I confess bowing here I find my rest and without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart sing Lord I need you Lord I need you The love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Yolanda is here.